here's my challenge. Each of us, what's one narrative that you think actually you should be going counter to that narrative? Like there's a narrative that we hear as entrepreneurs, as people in kind of tech. And like, what do you think is the like, actually, I don't know. Maybe it's this other thing instead. So do, if anyone has one, do it. But I, I, otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one. Yeah, go for it. So mine would be, um, I'll give you two. There's the in, inside crypto. There's a narrative that's basically like, oh, there's all this innovation happening. This, It's like the next protocol, the next token, the next whatever. I'm pretty sure that if you just buy three or four things, like if you buy Bitcoin, ETH, um, I put Luna in there now, just buy those three and you just chill. Either all of crypto is going to work and those will work amazingly or crypto is not going to work. And no matter what you did, like if those fail, if those don't go up dramatically in value, um, crypto just didn't work and none of the shit will work. And so I think actually a basically like for a while, the best strategy was Bitcoin and chill. And now it's ETH and chill. I basically think it's still the same. I think it's like buying two or three tokens and not even needing to know anything more, just chilling on those is probably the best investment of the next like 10 to 15 years. It's going to outperform everything during that time. I th So I think like going deeper down the rabbit hole and like learning more is actually going to fuck up your returns versus just buying the, the, the main ones and just holding for, for like 10 years and not thinking about it. That's one. And then the other is, I think that angel investing doesn't make much sense anymore. And I say this as somebody who angel invests, like the valuations are so high um, that like, if I think about like that same money going into like one of these sort of boring cash flow businesses is so much better for your life. So if you're like an individual angel investor and you have, let's say a hundred thousand dollars, you know, or $300,000 that you want to go put into like a basket of 20 startups. It's like, are you sure you shouldn't just buy like, like get an SBA loan and go buy like some random website that's already producing profit and that'll pay itself off in two years or less. And, uh, and now you own this cash flowing asset. Like, I'm pretty sure that's just going to do better. Dude, I, over I agree. Than a basket of angel investments. The, 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 our friends who have all crushed it on angel investing, you know, it means they made their investments five or eight years ago and it was different. It is, it's outlandish at the moment. So I agree with that. I think for mine that I think that it's actually, I think that, I think that you only have a few swings in your career. And a lot of people are like, oh, you should be patient and you've got a lot of time to do certain stuff. I actually think you should try, you should dedicate your 20s to getting your first significant win. Because after that, life gets a lot harder. You get a lot less energy. You're a lot smarter, which is actually bad. You actually, it's kind of good to be kind of ignorant. Um, and not enough people, I think I'll, I'll, oftentimes people go the other route where they go, well, just go join something for a little while and learn. In my opinion, F that. Your 20s, dedicate it to getting a win and getting, even if it's relatively small, and do it as fast as possible. Because after that, life is a lot easier. I'll give my what, Sean? <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, give the Moyes quote about getting rich quick. He goes, "Why does everyone hate on getting rich quick? Get rich quick schemes are the best. I want to get rich <laughs> quick. I don't want to get rich slow." <laughs> I got, I got two real quick. So I got off the phone with a friend of mine who works at Facebook. He told me this morning. He told me that he works roughly 90, 90 to 120 minutes per day on average. <laughs> I thought you were going to say 90 to 120 hours a week. He, yeah, it's the best when you measure your work in minutes. He texted me <laughs> He texted me today. He said it was 9, 12 a.m. He said 9, 12 a.m. Finish work for the day. 12, 12 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and so... Yo, put, put us in yeah. a group chat. I want him to text us every day, just the timestamp of when he's so done. So that's what, that's that's what I, I told him to do. I said, you need to create like a Twitter and non-account. A Twitter. That's, and, yeah, and that's so genius. I'm going to stay tuned. Do that. Um, but I think that in your 20s, like potentially go work at Facebook, go work at Google, get those high paying jobs. Check. I think that, by the way, I think, I think that's a good way to get a win. Get, get, you know, do that for a few years while you're, you know, do your, doing your, your learning on the side, like join a DAO, build a community, build a newsletter, do whatever you want to do. It would really speaks to you while you're, you're not, 
you know. Yeah, so you're making money and you're learning. What more could you ask for? And then my and you know, just because you gave a crypto uh, one, Sean, I think that, and and I spent a lot of time in NFT land and Web three land too. I think that NFTs are going to ninety nine percent free to mint. It's going to be a free, free to mint thing. I think the the idea of selling NFTs uh, will be a very small thing. Okay, so what what happens? Why why would I give away something for free? Or what's my incentive? So what happens after it's free to mint? So, yeah, I mean, you know, okay. So the idea right now, it's like people are selling NFTs and projects for 0.05 to 0.2, let's say, on average for some of these, you know, 10,000 PFP projects. I think that um, that's going to burn out at some point. And I think we're starting to see it burn out a little bit. And... I think that, you know, did you see the 100 Thieves drop? Yeah, they, they uh, what did they do exactly? They did, they did a much smaller amount. So they basically, first of all, it was in gaming and gamers hate NFTs. So the fact that they did a successful gaming NFT launch, like obviously kudos to them. But basically they won this championship and they were like, okay, in order to get this like collectible, you can go grab it. It's free. We're not saying it's going to be worth anything. And they got 700,000 people to collect this collectible. And, and it's, like a it's a trophy. Right? And then like they a, make money yeah. on if there's value, right? So if it grows in value, they get royalties. And I think that's what you're going to see a lot of is like creators and and, and big communities basically doing freedom mints. Um, even though people seem, you know, people today think that selling NFTs is the future. I don't think so. By the way, I'm going to change mine to just simplify it. Instead of starting a company, buy an existing business. I think that is the most overlooked, obvious thing for a smart person to do is how do you take your market risk to essentially zero? Um, you buy a business that's already working and profitable and you just say, cool, I'm a better operator than this person or I know about a different form of operation than they do. And so I can grow this using Facebook ads or I can grow this using outsourcing or I can grow this using you know, code or whatever it is. So you you hear almost no narrative. Uh, you hear tons of narrative around the genius visionary startup, start a new thing, building a new project, launching a new thing. And like you hear like one or two examples of people buying businesses. And I think that for most smart people, buying a business is a far better idea than starting. Yeah, a but when you're in your 20s, somebody my, who's my pushback to that is like when you're in your, let's say, early 20s, like, do you know, like you're saying that now, but I think like, yeah. Um, you do need like that operational experience and that's where my point is, um, you got to like, it's worthwhile to, to just potentially take a, a high paying job and then on the side kind of like experiment and do stuff. Yeah, that's true. I, I'm not really limiting mine to the twenties. I think, uh, I'm still making mistakes in my thirties. So I'm assuming other people are too. And I, I guess it's more like what narrative do I hear now? that's easy to float along with that. I'm like, you know what, actually, I don't, I don't think, I just think this right. is true. And like, that's the one for me, which is like, for most people who want to be entrepreneurial, they default to starting a business. And I think actually, maybe it should be the opposite. Maybe you should default to taking on an existing business and growing it and only create a new thing. If you like actually have a new invention in mind, a new idea that really you can't shake in your head. Versus like just starting a new startup. I like that. <laughs> because because you want to be an entrepreneur, yep. right?